Welcome to the worship service of the Metaview Church of Christ. Hello, Metaview family. Thank you for joining us today. Can't wait to the day that we see each other once again in person at the building. At this moment, I ask that we go to our Father in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather here in your safety, we thank you for fellowship and family. Lord, we ask that you fill our hearts with love so that we can share this love with others. We ask that you strengthen us, restore us, and continue to inspire us with your love, Lord. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Sing church family. It's so good that we can all be together virtually. And let's take a few minutes to think about what we're about to do with the Lord's Supper. One of my favorite scriptures to read around the time of Lord's Supper is from Psalm 130. Psalm 130 says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who can stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. A couple of things to kind of prepare and guide our minds as we are about to go through the supper that I'd like to bring out. The main is the idea of waiting. Verse 5 says, I wait for the Lord. My soul, or in some translations, my whole being waits. And in his word, I hope. You know, as we still go through the effects of being under stay-at-home orders or at least socially distancing, we're all waiting for something. We're waiting to see our loved ones. We're waiting to meet as a church family again. We're waiting for 
a different time to come. But let's not forget that we're also waiting for our Lord to come again. And as we spend time taking this supper, as we spend time preparing our hearts and our minds for this, let's remember that this is preparing us as we wait, as we wait for the Lord to come again. Because 1 Corinthians 11 would tell us that we do this proclaiming Jesus' death until he comes again. But let's also remember that we are waiting expectantly. I really like this imagery in the line in verse 6. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. Lately, I've been able to kind of really see this in my mind of a watchman standing on a wall in ancient Israel, waiting for the morning light to come, to know that his job is done, to know that his rest has come. And as we are waiting for our Lord to come again, we're waiting for our light to come. We're waiting for our sun to rise again so that we can have peace and we can have rest. But lastly, let's always remember that as we're waiting, we use this time to renew ourselves in our waiting. You know, every time that we come to share the Lord's Supper, we're supposed to judge ourselves. 1 Corinthians 11 would say that if you had judged yourselves rightly, you would not be judged. And so as we're taking this time to think about what Jesus has done for us, what he gave for us in his body and gave for us in his blood, let's take a moment and be a little judgmental of ourselves. Let's hold ourselves up to Jesus and say, we don't add up, but let's just so expectantly wait for his coming again. Let's bow in prayer for the bread. Our Father in heaven, we praise your name together and we're so thankful that as we come together on the Lord's day, that we can lift our voices humbly up to you, saying praise be to God. And Father, certainly we praise you at this time for what has been given for us. We thank you that you have loved us so much that you sent Jesus into the world to die for our sins. We thank you, Father, that his body was given on the cross so that we might have life. We thank you so much for the hope that we have through you. We thank you so much for the hope that you give us through Jesus. We ask for your peace. We ask for your help to focus at this moment. It's through your son's name we offer our prayer. Amen. I'll wait just a second before we go on. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you for the time that we have now. And Father, as we hold ourselves up against Jesus, we find that we fail. We find that we sin. And we know that he never sinned. We know that he was perfect. And how unworthy we are of what you have given us. But Father, because of your love and because of Jesus' love for us and his obedience to you, we have hope right now, and we have the hope of that forgiveness. We ask that you forgive us of all of our sins, that you keep us in the right way this week, that you help us to remember the incredible responsibility we have and the incredible weight of forgiveness we have through this blood. We thank you that we have this cup to give us a physical remembrance of what Jesus did for us. And as we take this fruit of the vine, we ask that you would help us to be focused and be guided in mind to please you. Please help us this week to serve you more and to love you more with all of our being as we wait for his return and to see you, Father, face to face. It's through Jesus' name we ask our prayer.
Hi. 